When people think about Johor Bahru, many picture condos, towers and highways, but I'd like to share something else. The remarkable transformation of its streets. To put things into perspective, Johor Bahru faced several issues in the previous decades. It suffered from a quality decline of the public realm, and in the early 2000s, was congested with motor vehicles. With its river, the city's former key port becoming one of the dirtiest rivers in Malaysia, then covered up with concrete, it was losing its historical significance. Fortunately, the old city centre has something that isn't found in the newer monofunctional city quarters, robustness. It refers to a place that is flexible and can adapt to suit different circumstances. To better understand what makes a place robust, I went online and found a study titled Assessing Urban Vitality of Johor Bahru City Centre by Dr. Tay Bo Song, who has kindly allowed me to share his research here. Three prerequisite requirements of a robust place are permeability, variety, and legibility. Permeability of a place refers to how connected it is to nearby destinations. A permeable place is one where people can get into and out of easily. But not all permeable places are robust. For example, this stretch of Queen Street is easily accessible by two MRT lines nearby, express buses to Malaysia, and six bus services at Rochor Road nearby. But you won't see people having a good time here. It's not a good place. This brings us to the second point, variety. A robust place provides a diverse range of activities and experiences to attract people. The third point, legibility, refers to how easily a place can be identified so that individuals can orientate themselves. Landmarks such as clock towers or even public transport lines can help people to form a mental map of the city. It's important to remember that these three factors work hand in hand and are hardly found in car-centric developments with huge parking lots surrounding mono-use buildings. Dr. Tay mapped out JB City Centre's urban structure in 2012, based on its plot division and land use to assess each street's robustness. Make a guess where the old city centre is. Yep, it's right here with small plots and areas of varied land users in close proximity. He also made observations of several streets. Jalan Tun Abdul Razak wasn't and isn't robust. There are no active frontages, it's hard to cross on foot, and it functions like a road rather than a street. Jalan Wong Afuk featured an isolated public art with little human activities on its southern end. But some land users spilled over onto the sidewalk which made it interesting. Along Jalan Meldrum, people gathered along the stretch with active frontages, but not along its northern end where they weren't present. Jalan Dhobi had no human activities but had on-street parking and a narrow width between buildings, allowing easier pedestrian crossing. It wasn't a good street, but it was and is robust. He concluded that while further research is needed to understand why several robust spaces are dysfunctional, JB City Centre lacked active frontages, comfort sidewalks and public amenities. So how is the city's robustness being realised to create great streets? Jalan Meldrum, formerly a two-way street, has been transformed into a single-lane pedestrian priority street. Designed as a pedestrian mall, it does an excellent job at defining space. The street has brick surfacing instead of asphalt, making it blend with the sidewalk, sending a clear message that the space is meant to be shared. Intersections are also kept small and tight to reduce crossing distances for pedestrians. This shared space is wide to people walking, but narrow to people driving. Black fences are placed on both sides of the street to prevent drivers from parking on the sidewalk, though not motorcycles. And to retain pedestrian flow between buildings, there are gaps between them. It's also nice that the sidewalk isn't raised too high up above the shared space, allowing easier crossings to be made. This makes the street active and permeable. Notice that the buildings are positioned up front without setbacks, Activities and businesses spill over onto the sidewalk, and the presence of human activities activates the space. You can see people talking, eating, walking around carrying food, people watching, and having a good time. It gives the area a sense of place. Formerly clogged with motor vehicles in the early 2000s, Jalan Tan Hyok Ni took advantage of its heritage status and was upgraded in 2004 to have paved walkways and multicolored building facades. There are trees lining the street to create a cooler microclimate, 
and similar to Jalan Meldrum, it has a shared space in the middle. It was nice to see that people driving were really giving way to pedestrians. A more recent initiative, the Johor Bahru City Centre Transformation Plan, saw several changes made to further enhance the walkability and livability of the area. The city's former port, Sungai Segate, was covered in 2005 to block its terrible stench. But after taking inspiration from the Chongye Chen stream, the JB City Council decided to uncover and clean it up, allowing the river to flow through the heart of the city once again. It is now a public walkway that features sculptures, benches, and on several segments, lined with shop houses. Bicycle parking is available, though not used at the time of filming. It's impressive that what was once a dirty river is now a lively destination. And even if the weather can be terrible, it doesn't stop people from walking, cycling, or hanging out in well-designed public spaces. The street that caught me interested in making this video is Jalan Dobi. And welcome to Johor Bahru. I remembered it being plagued with cars when I visited JB Central before the borders closed. And revisiting it in 2023 was a pleasant surprise. Jalan Dobi was once just like any shop house lined street. Asphalt in the middle, no greenery, lined with car parking lots and flanked with narrow, discontinuous sidewalks. But today, it is much more pedestrian friendly. When walking along Jalan Chus, there are now raised zebra crossings installed. A similar treatment is done at the entrance of Jalan Dobi. Removing car parking spaces allows wider sidewalks to be made so that more people can use the area. Five footways on the ground floor of shop houses provide refuge during inclement weather. I'm not a fan of pedestrian fences, but at least these are relatively permeable, with gaps around every 10 meters. A gentler curb cut at such gaps would be of great use to improve wheelchair accessibility. The raised zebra crossing, which I find the most effective, is at the junction with Jalan Pahang, as it features a small turning radius. Notice how the raised design forces drivers to pay attention and give way to pedestrians. The tight radius acts as another reminder to slow down to avoid damaging their vehicle. Every shop house line street should have this. Banda Johor Bahru proves that what you design for is what you get. Centering a street's design around the pedestrian, Walking makes up 75% of Jalan Meldrum's model share. Pedestrians also patronise the area more than people in cars and motorcycles. Well-designed streets can invite people to use them, even when the weather is hot. There were people strolling and chilling along Sungai Segate when I was filming in the afternoon. And a behavioural observation study in 2012 found that Jalan Meldrum sees more pedestrians in the daytime compared to the evenings on Fridays and weekends. Pedestrian-friendly streets are safer with the presence of people. Eyes on the street isn't just a theory by Jane Jacobs. A public space audit by Think City and Safety Pin found that the places with higher safety scores are the ones near JB Central. I like travelling and visiting cities, and while most cities I've been to have far too many streets that prioritise cars, they are no doubt robust. Street transformation projects are definitely not as flashy as shiny new towers, but they create places that are resilient and meaningful. I hope Banda Johor Bahru serves as an inspiration that encourages other cities to unleash the potential of their robustness to create great streets. Hey, thanks for sticking to the end of this video. If you'd like to see more content about great streets, well, the subscribe button is just right there. And if you really love what I do, come support me on Patreon. As always, thanks for watching and have a good morning.